Today is the first of the series that we've decided to start. Cooking with Tika. Cooking with Tika, yeah. We'd actually started about this before the last, our last lockdown, which was about two months ago at this stage, but we, uh, we obviously couldn't do it because we couldn't do it separately. Yeah. Basically what it is, is it's gonna be us just cooking stuff. And then the second part of it is, it's not a really serious cooking show, but you will learn some stuff. So what we're trying to say is, we're definitely not chefs. When you're telling you stuff about training, take it seriously. But when you tell you about stuff like this, this is just personal preference, but what tastes delicious. Yeah. Like, it'll either be very, 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 very tasty food that's not going to be productive for your athletic career, or it will be very, very practical food that could be productive for your career. Yeah. It's going to be a mishmash. So today's going to be a mixture of those two. Yeah. The meat is going to be something that's going to be very practical. But tell them what today's is. So what today's is, we're going to do steak and spuds, basically. Yeah. Uh, the steak. Oh. Don't just don't. Fancy potatoes and nice steak. Yeah. So the steak we're gonna do is just an option. It's venison steak. Um, we're gonna talk about cutting full steaks from a full roast. So we're just, it's like a top roast uh, piece of venison we have. The spuds then are gonna be slightly more upmarket, so probably not every day you're gonna be eating these spuds. Uh, but this is literally the meat we'd eat every day for lunch or for dinner. So I'm going to make what's called potato latke. Um, I think it's a Jewish and a word and I could be saying it wrong, but it's what? It's L-A-T-K-E. Uh, you probably have your own ways making them. And if your mother has been making them for the last 50 years, don't come at me, bro. All right. What we do is not follow directions on recipes. So we look at the recipe, we look at the ingredients and then we'll go, that's nice. And then just not follow it. And now, I've seen my mother do that. My mother is my mother actually is a chef. But yeah. She never follows the recipe. But she's an actual chef. And she gets the ingredients. But our food always tastes good. Yeah. Always tastes good. So just trust us when we say this tastes better this way. Usually we're also pretty lazy with cooking. So if we do it that way, it means it was the easiest way, but still tasting good. Yeah. So it's just a practical cooking show. So Fitz, first up is Fitz is going to be doing his. his Absolutely. Chef. So what we're starting off with today is like a top roast of venison so this is basically just one of the bigger muscle groups from the back leg this animal was taken in october of this year september or october of this year what pretty deer is it uh it's this is a fallow deer so it's a deer we have like locally here native deer native deer to ireland ain't no foreign there ain't no foreign deer here so what like the reason i wanted to do this today is a lot of the time when we tell people to be eating like steak and rice every day they're saying oh steak is so expensive Obviously, everyone's not going to be procuring the meat themselves, but you can buy cuts of meat like this. So this will be a typical cut of meat you'd buy just whole from a butcher. You can do this and cut your own steaks and get the entire roast used up as like easily friable steaks. It'll taste really, really good and it'll be a hell of a lot more cost effective. So this is just standard piece of meat. We'll just cut some steaks off it. So usually what you'll do is you'll do something called squaring off a roast. This is like when I learned butchery amateurly, this is what we call it. I'm just using a filleting knife here. You could use like a filleting knife or a boning knife. Just don't use something like a serrated knife. We'll just set that aside. Typically with your steaks, you want these, because they're venison steaks, to be kind of thick. We'll want these to be done medium rare. You might have them a small bit on the rare side of medium. We'd usually call that, um, would be in Ireland, would be a sirloin. It's cut. What's your cutting now, isn't it? Uh, no. So, with this, a steak like this on a beef animal would be a sirloin cut. I know. Oh, sorry. Yeah, but I'm saying no. For, but for Americans, what do they call it? Is that in New York or in America? I think it's what they call it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The problem with if we were to take the sirloin roast, so the actual muscle group of a sirloin on a, a deer, they'd just be too small to be sirloin. So, on our fallow here. But no less delicious. But no less delicious. Just to point that out. Uh, so these are things that are like similarly sized to a steak. You usually wouldn't cut these into steaks, but they work quite well. I think you've kind of perfected the art of frying steak. I don't think other people fry steak as much as we would in terms of our frying deer, especially is what I would say. Yeah. No one else. Frying deer is like, it's a bit of a subtle art because it dries out very, very easily. Yeah, most people don't fry their deer. A lot of people will do is cook whole joints. They'll cook, uh, grill it. Yeah. Roast it, slow cook it. But no, you... I would fry all, all the deer, I guess. The odds, I don't, I, I don't particularly, I'm not a huge fan of the slow cooking. Yeah, I really like slow cooking, but for lunch, I just prefer yeah. steak. Slow cooking is great if you're feeding a lot of people. Yeah, absolutely. But for a day-to-day -day eating, 
frying is just so 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 much more yeah. versatile and tasty. It's consistently tasty. So this is like the disadvantage of having a whole roast is that you'll get pieces of silver skin. Your butcher can take these off for you a lot of the time. It's very very gooey on dear. Silver skin. Silver skin, yeah. Compared to so that's the Mayo fascia. A cow. For those of you who like foam rolling. So what we're left with here is we'll have three or four steaks. We're just gonna probably do three of them for today. The next piece on from this then, like this has been washed and dried. The next piece on from this will be applying a small bit of oil and doing some seasoning on them. What we have here is pepper, hot chili powder, and just normal smoked paprika. These are like the cheapest spices you can get in like little Aldi, whatever. We use a, a lot of them on a weekly basis, so we don't really go for expensive ones. The important thing to talk about here is we'll put salt on after the steaks are cooked, but when we're talking about like seasoning a steak directly before we put it on the pan, the last thing we want to do is put salt on the steak, have all the salt draw the moisture out of the steak, and then when we go to eat it, or when we go to fry it, that moisture will just flash off straight away. So particularly for venison, you'll see there's no fat. Like this is all just silver skin around the edge. So it's a very, very lean cut of meat. And typically we don't fry venison because it dries out too much. So this is one of the key things. We want to make sure we don't dry out the meat by salting it or by kind of overly cooking it. Part of not wanting to dry it out, obviously, is we're just gonna apply some oil to this. We'll have oil in the pan as well. So a very small amount, just over the top of the meat. Obviously, because we're not psychopaths, we wouldn't usually put spices on a plate like this <laughs> and apply them as if we're in a cooking show, but it just, it gives you an idea of the kind of amounts we'd use. We are in a cooking show. But we are in a cooking show today. So a good bit of pepper, like a lot of this is just gonna cook off anyway. We need to make sure we keep some for the other side. Paprika is probably the thing that will make the most difference to the kind of like fullness of the flavor. Um, and the real reason we use hot chili powder above a mild chili powder is we don't want a huge amount of like chili flavor on the meat. I just want like that bit of heat um, on the meat as we're doing it. So I'll get these done, just rub those in. And then our steaks can be flipped over and sorted on the other side. I hope that squeegeeness is coming across on the camera. So that's ready to go now, it's oiled and everything. This has been defrosting for the morning, so for four or five hours. So it's pretty much at room temperature now. If you've just taken this out of the fridge, uh, you need to make sure those steaks are room temperature or slightly above before they go in the pan. So Gurf is gonna do his bit now. I'm gonna leave these to rest for a while um, and we'll be back in a sec. Just wash your spuds because you don't want a bit of dirt. These them. spuds are from just over the hill there. So obviously just wash your just in that way, there's a, an honesty box. Uh, I don't know if people in other countries have honesty boxes, but there's things in Ireland that's quite common, is people will grow their own vegetables, a lot more so in the last few years. And they'll essentially get a lock box, a shelf, sometimes they'll have a refrigerator unit, they'll leave it outside their house or at a junction where people will often go to and then you just put in money. Sometimes they put a price in, sometimes people leave money. You're actually better off not putting a price on them because people will give you more money. Yeah. Uh, people will feel guilty. Uh, and I've never heard of anyone robbing from a lockbox ever. Not once have I ever heard it happening from an honesty box, which is very strange. Yeah. And they're usually superb quality. So it's actually lack cas as well, not lack cas. I just made sure there. Uh, I, like I said, nobody come at me, right? What size do you want fits? You want this size or this size? I want thickies. You want the thickies? Yeah. Okay, so basically what they are is just really nice potato cakes. But they're actually, they're very simple to make, but they're pretty nice. I don't peel them when I do them. I often use baby potatoes, because it's just a little bit easier. But I'd imagine most people would peel them beforehand, but we're not going to do that. So basically all you do is just grate your potatoes. Straight into cold water, it has to be cold water as well. Mix them around it. Listen, right? If you, some people have a fear of uh, food, food scraps. If there's a phobia for it, if you have this, you will not be able to uh, 
do this bit. So basically, we're just mixing them. Same way you would mix the dough, which we'll show you next time I'm cooking the sika. Make basic bread. But basically you're just mixing them around until they're, the water's gone cloudy, dirty. Basically what you're gonna do is get all the starches out because it'll be a lot crispier then. So the starches will be, will keep them kind of moist. 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 Say moist next to the mic there. Moist. Moist. It's a very deep and throaty. Yeah. So How it should be. Once you've left them in there, don't let them too long. It's necessarily like, what, 20, 30 seconds being in there. Get a sieve. Flexing as hard as you can. Uh, basically, strain the sieve. All of it. Sieve it in. Pour in a bit. Squeeze it out. Look at that. We don't want that. Nobody wants soggy potato cakes or potato latkes. If someone knows how to say it properly, just give me a phonetic pronunciation in the comments and leave it at that, right? And then if you come along and you hear me saying it wrong, just like that person's comment so you know I was saying it wrong and you don't have to leave a comment, right? We leave it at that. Is that fair for everyone, right? That's fair, isn't it? That's very fair. Yeah, just squeeze it out until you see the uh, the potato juices <laughs> start coming out. So basically, you want to get them all out. So you want them really dry. And you want to get rid of all the starches so they're really crispy. You do not want soggy ones of these. Trust me. They'll also take a little bit longer to cook if you leave a lot of starches in because they're not cooked yet and you're frying them, they need to be dry, crispy, so they cook a lot faster, so you can, so they evaporate a lot faster and get crispy. So make sure everything is coming, all the potato juice is out. Can I say that? No, but we say these are not made for kids, so I can say that. Yeah. Look at that. Imperfect eggy goodness. Two eggs, two large eggs. You can put a little bit more if you want, depending on your preference. You'll get used to making things as you do. Don't have to follow recipes, right? So, Two eggs in first. Are you excited? So excited. So salt and pepper in here. Uh, some people don't like pepper in here. I do. Generous with the salt, right? Makes then everything happy. Uh, pretty generous with pepper too. That's nice pepper. That's fresh. That's great. You gotta keep it. So we. Uh, Whisk, whisk these bad boys up. So basically, just the quantity of eggs corresponding with the amount of potatoes you're making. So if, you're, if you put in four potatoes, obviously two eggs is not enough. I like to make them a little bit moist. There we go again with that word. Uh, straight in. Mix them around. So you'll see, they'll dry up pretty fast because you've taken all the starch out of the potatoes to so kind of soak up the eggy goodness. Okay, so what we have here is those seasoned steaks with some oil in them. This pan is now very hot. So the other important thing about cooking really lean meat is that you don't want to dry it out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fry this on both sides very quickly. So you'll see the pan is like almost smoking. We're almost at the smoking point for the oil. So I'm just going to lay these in here. Loud hissing is good. And what I'm looking to do is like seal off both sides and then I'll lower the heat of the pan. There's no need for me to have a lid on this right now, but I will once I lower the heat. So you'll see now these are starting to cook on the underside, so I'm starting to get some like crisping and browning on the underside. I'm just gonna flip these quickly now, seal off the other side. And then we'll do one more kind of rotation when the heat is a bit lower. Okay, so these have been in here for like five or six minutes now, maybe a bit longer. Uh, if you come over to look at the pan, there's a lot of moisture left in there now. So we talked about having one more flip left to do, and this will kind of finish cooking the other side of the meat. It will also flash off some of those juices, and then we're left with good steaks. And the last piece is just letting these rest. If you want these to cook more, you can like add foil around the outside. I prefer adding foil around the outside usually because these are usually pretty rare. I think these are going to be pretty medium though. And 
just let them rest for like five minutes. This also makes sure they're warm as well. So after you've rested them, it'll make sure they're warm when you cut them and eat them. Holy shit balls. And this is like, this is how we'll cut steak every day. This is definitely like medium well. That's well done for me to be honest. Yeah. But it's still no less delicious. No. Good quality meat just tastes good at any level of... I think the problem with stuff being well done a lot of the time as well is that it will be very dry. Yeah. We whereas this is tray juicy. So with these, I would almost always use butter. But if you're using a cast iron pan, butter by itself won't stay in the pan long enough when you're trying to cook these. So I have to do a little mixture of both. Not too much. I usually only cook stuff in butter. Um, just personal preference. A generous helping of butter, by the way. So nice sizzle. You want the pan not as hot as you would for cooking steaks, but pretty close to that. So like out of 10 RP7 when you're putting these in. So you're almost uh, close to deep frying these almost. It's kind of a, a similar a level of, of oil in the pan. It gives you a little bit of depth, like a millimeter or two of oil. A shallow fry. A shallow fry would be a little bit more than a shallow fry even. So you want it. These take longer to cook than you would think as well. So don't, if you fry them initially. So what I get is, is a ladle, but you can literally put in a fork load of these in if you want. Um, where's my spoon? So nice ladle full. You should hear a sizzle. You put them in. I'd want it, I have two this one. So, initially in the pan, the egg will spread out. I like an eggy. So, I like to bring the egg in close, flatten them out a little bit. You can make them small, like you can make them a lot smaller than that. But there's two of us, and we're fat bastards, and the meat is cooked. So, I like to bring in the egg in a little bit close. Probably should have a little bit less egg than that, ideally but they will be delicious no less. Don't salt them too much yet either, wait for the cook to salt them. So they're nice and close. I'm gonna turn down the heat a small bit. One of the advantages of cooking these on, let's say, a copper pan or a non-stick pan is you can control the heat a little bit faster. The uh, cast iron pan takes a little bit longer for the heat to come out of them, which is always one of the benefits of cooking meat, but for cooking something like a lacquer, you'd want a little bit more control over the heat so you can turn it down. So you want the initial sizzle, and then you want to let it cook in the middle. Once you see the star, top of them kind of drying out a little bit, so you don't want it fully dried out. It goes, lift them. Oh, no. There we go. They get a little bit messy, but don't stress. I don't stress anything. Lift them again. Usually you can make smaller. So that's kind of a little bit more well done, but that's the color you're looking for. That's like, that's almost perfect. I haven't cooked these in weeks, so I'm pretty happy with that. You can put a little bit more butter in. And when I say you can, I'm going to put a little bit more butter in. But if you have, you know, your macros, whatever, it's your problem. This one let me chop the little lips. Oh, chop the little lips. Recording? Yeah. That's just gonna be rolled. About the same on the other side. I'm gonna press. Doesn't need a bra. That's my nice sinks. Does that smell nice? Thanks for watching. I always eat these bits. They have a serving of salt. And then some cuts of venison are great with a bit of hot sauce. Yeah, especially thin sliced steak seems to suit hot sauce phenomenally well. Thanks, George.